Back on the Sportsmax Zone, and we're talking some cricket now. The Vice President of Cricket West Indies, Dr. Kishore Shallow, says there will be changes to the system used to award retainer contracts to players. Speaking on the popular Mason and Guest show on Voice of Barbados, uh, Dr. Shallow said this. For the next contractual period, we will have an improved system in terms of how we award these contracts. As the director of cricket, Jimmy Adams, myself and others, have been involved in that process over the last few months. And we have been working closely with WIPA, the West Indies Players Association as well, who want to ensure that we are all on a level playing field, both from the CWI side and the player side. Now, those comments follow the strong statement from the Ghana Cricket Board expressing its disappointment that none of the country's players uh, was included on the CWI's retained players list. In order to receive a central contract, players must participate in at least 50% of matches organized by the CWI. They must also meet stringent fitness standards. Now, joining us uh, to discuss Dr. Shallow's comments, Fazir Mohammed in sweet, sweet TNT. Uh, Faz, uh, a lot of furor over the squad that was announced, or the retainer contracts list that uh, was announced. Some, some players and some countries not happy. Your take on that, first of all, and uh, Dr. Shallow's response. Well, as the more things change, the more they remain the same. In the nearly 40 years that you've been in this business, I'm sure you'll recognize that even before there was central contract, just naming a squad or a touring party was cause for someone to threaten to get a gunboat sailing to wherever the Cricket West Indies or West Indies Cricket Board offices would have been. So this is just another layer of bacchanal, let's put it that way, because no matter what they would have come up with, and clearly there are issues with the parameters used and, and the judgments that would have been used in this case, Whatever they would have come up with would have gotten somebody vexed somewhere enough that they'd want to have a go at Cricket West Indies and the selectors and the selection panel and so on. I think, though, it's very mature of Cricket West Indies via their vice president, Dr. Kishore Shalo, to acknowledge that this, the, so the structure, the, the, the format for coming up with these decisions will have to be improved because the dark days of you take what I say and don't dare ask a question those days should have gone a long time ago. Sadly, we still have it in some context, not just in cricket, but in, in many, many other aspects of leadership in our Caribbean region. It, it's good that Dr. Shallow would have recognized that, look, that there would have been a lot of talking point about Roston Chase, about uh, some of the other players being left out, notably Shimron Hetmeyer, uh, a, a talking point as well. So when, when you look at those situations, when you look at those who would have been included, like a Darren Bravo, uh, for example, with the little bit of cricket that he would have played, yes, there would be talking points. But it's good to, to hear from Cricket West Indies via their vice president that it's not cast in stone. It is obviously for this 12 month period because the decisions have been made, the contracts have been offered, but they're gonna look at it with a view to improving it the next time around. And I think that's very mature. Yeah, lead selector Roger Harper did say in his response to questions about the central contracts that they are performance related. He mentioned things like a 30% batting average for the batsmen and um, at least 50% participation in matches organized by the CWI during that period. Um, how did you rate his attempt to explain at least some aspects of why players were, were ignored? Well, well, you know, for, for Roger, it's always a difficult uh, situation, and he has to be the diplomat in that regard. And I think it's, it's, it's something that we need to recognize, Lance, that with the best will in the world, there will always be subjective parameters. There will always be a matter of personal, not just so much opinion, but your reading of a particular player. Because if we were to go down the line, Lance, of just your basic stats, then we don't need anybody. You just punch it into the computer and let it pop out your top five batsmen, your top all-rounders, your top bowlers, and then you go with that. Then there's no need for that personal analysis, which would take very much a lot of the heart out of any sport, not just cricket, because there would have to be certain considerations. For example, in the case of Admire, where, where clearly this is a man with some sumptuous talent, but is it that he's squandering it? Is it that by him not getting a contract, it's a message to him that, look, you're not about to be discarded because you do have your territorial franchise contract and so on, but this is a, a, hopefully a wake-up call. He wouldn't be the first brilliant talent to have been dropped. This is the norm. 
in, in many elements of our, of our cricketing history. Yeah. So it's really up to the player himself to recognize whether he's feel, felt that he's been dealt with unfairly to take it as a motivation to move on so that the next time they, they, we come to this period of assessing contracts, there's no discussion concerning him. Definitely. And Faz, the fact that Dr. Kishore Shalu said, you know, they're going to re-examine these standards and whatnot, and of course they're going to make, there will be changes, they are in discussion. Does this mean that, and you know, the first thing that came to mind, is it that they're going to change to set standards to ensure that, you know, more players get um, contracts? And if they do that, does that encourage, you know, our cricket to go from bad to worse? Because, I mean, if you alter changes to please people, you know, you change the standards and whatnot, doesn't that contribute to our cricket um, getting worse? Well, it, it, it would water it down if they go that way, that yeah. you're suggesting, Mariah, that they would say, well, look, you know, we get a lot of costs for this. Let's change the parameters and, and bring in more players uh, to keep everybody happy. Let's make sure that every territory has at least two representatives. We don't want to go down that road at no. all. What I would hope that they're considering is to look at those parameters from an objective point of view, from an analytical point of view, from a cricketing point of view, from a personality point of view, and determine where they can make the necessary adjustments. I don't think it's about watering it down, but I think it's about coming up with a system. No system like this will ever be fail safe, will ever be foolproof. But you want to ensure as best as you can to, to minimize inconsistencies, minimize clear errors, uh, not of so much of judgment, but where the parameters that you are told are being used have not been applied in certain cases. And I think that's what they need to work on. Doesn't necessarily mean more players, could mean fewer players. Uh, if, if you really stick to certain uh, really strict parameters, but I think it's about improving it in the real sense rather than pandering to populist tendencies. Definitely, Faz, but you know, um, when you come under pressure, it causes you to do things sometimes that you don't expect to, and especially with the CWI board. Of course, you know, this is something that, you know, when elections come around, people vote, and, you know, we notice that a lot of those in power, you know, they like to ensure that the people that they're serving is happy. So it just makes me wonder, you know, if under pressure, if, you know, they do something, and, of course, it's, it's, it has negative repercussions. I hear you on that. People looking forward to an election are always mindful of that. Yeah. But uh, I, I think you, you'd have to say that in, in this particular case, we'll have to wait and see in a year's time if it comes around to, to another election cycle because we've just gone past one. Right. So next year will we'll not be in that election cycle. And maybe that's the time to make the tough decisions, to make the decisions that are really in the best interest of West Indies cricket. And even whether the players believe it or not, depending on how those parameters are adjusted and how they are tweaked, that it could actually be in the best interest of the players themselves as far as understanding what they need to do, where they need to be, what, what, they need, what levels they need to reach, not just in terms of playing the game, but fitness levels, attitude as well. Uh, your, your, your deportment, the way you carry yourself, you're representing the West Indies. You're an ambassador for an entire region with a rich history in the game. So all of that may seem to be too intangible to, to really be judged, but who knows, it might be a factor as well. Yeah, I hear you, Faz, and I know that the ceiling on some previous cycles had been like 22 players on central contracts. This particular one had 18. You said something very interesting just now, that sometimes when a player loses a central contract, it is a wake-up call for that player to, you know, be more diligent and apply themselves even more to, to you know, resuscitate their own careers. Um, Jermaine Blackwood, for instance, had lost his, his, his spot in the West Indies setup, and when he got the opportunity to come back, he has looked uh, a, a more serious and uh, a player applying himself better. Absolutely, and, and talking about Jamaicans, the great Lawrence Rowe, who many still regard as the, the finest, the, the, the prettiest batsman they would have ever seen, started so fantastically against New Zealand, double 100 and 100, and then just went off the boil, lost his way a bit, came back in with a triple 100 against England a couple of years later, uh, but was in and out and so on. And these are the examples. No one is ever perfect. There's no linear progression in sport that says it's always going to be uninterrupted. And that's a test of character. Lance. As, as, I mean, you all have seen enough sport, you follow enough sport to know that there will always be challenges. There will always be stumbling blocks. It's whether or not that player, him or her, sees it as some personal attack, sees it as some vendetta, sees it as, as some sort of, uh, someone has it out for me in the West Indies cricket uh, establishment or something. Rather than be preoccupied with that, get out there, 
show your, your, your doctorate, show that you can perform whenever you're asked, whether it's for club, territory, region, franchise. Once you're called upon and you perform, they must notice you eventually. Okay, Faz, as usual, always great talking to you here on the Sports Max Zone and uh, um, getting your cricket acumen displayed for our viewers. Thanks for joining us. Try my best to kill it. <laughs> yeah, so um, Dr. Kishore Shallow said it, George and Mariah, that um, they've been meeting with the director of cricket, Jimmy Adams, and other stakeholders about addressing areas of the uh, central contract awarding that they want, want to look at. Of course, Jimmy Adams has been steeped in cricket history. He, from a, a schoolboy, was an outstanding cricketer. He has cricket in his blood. He was a talented footballer as well, yeah. uh, Jimmy Adams was, but um, chose cricket. And I guess, you know, they have a group there that would be well equipped to make decisions that would be good for West Indies cricket. Definitely. And what I will say is, and you know, Faz sort of said it in his responses, you can't please everybody. And when we make decisions, uh, the reason that they are in those positions is to ensure that, of course, cricket benefits and it's everything that is done is done for the welfare of West Indies cricket. I feel as if we've been losing for too long and, you know, it's time to turn things around. So let's just you know, make decisions in ensuring that, you know, cricket benefits. It's not about if this country is pleased and that country is pleased. Like, we're done pleasing everybody. Let's just fix the cricket. George? <laughs> I don't think anything was wrong with the criteria uh, set down. Um, I, I, I find it a tad ridiculous that Dr. Shallow said what he said. And I could understand him saying this yeah. on the eve of an election. He doesn't have to do anything to pander to any constituency for the next uh, year and change at least before he, 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 they get around to that. And even so, you know, who, who knows what will happen. But that, that's not on his mind. So I, I, I couldn't understand why he said what he said, because uh, whatever you do, people will be displeased. Correct. You have people in a country, the democratic society, voting in a government. And even after they voted in the government with, over, with an overwhelming majority, there are still people who come on the TV the day after come and, and question whether or not the voters picked correctly and all of this. So I'm just saying there is no unanimous decision when you're talking about free will and opinion and they could tweak the criteria till thy kingdom come somewhere or the other if jamaica tnt barbados guyana whomever feels slighted they're going to complain and make it look as if the criteria is all a set of rubbish mm. still a lot more to come on the sports max zone including our nba segment there is that to track as well because it is a thursday of course back with more on the other side of the break <laughs>